Ah. I give you a very quick introduction to fact checking and verification and also also teach you a few just a few tools that you can use in your everyday life when you receive a what you what you think might be a dodgy WhatsApp message before you know pressing send and so on. Um, yeah, so so I hope I hope to um, teach you a few skills to do your own fact checking um, today, or just give you an introduction to that. Okay, I mean so initially it was something that would, was used in newsrooms. So it had a, it has a traditional meaning in journalism that relates to internal editing procedures before something is 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 published. So that would be your sub editor, your sub editors who look after, who look who make sure that everything is spelled correctly, and that you're using the right grammar, and and also when they have time, which is not in today's uh, with today's uh, media landscape and the challenges and the challenges um, within it. And they don't really have that much time to do fact-checking prior to publication. Uh, fact-checking as we know it today and as um, Africa Check does it is checking the accuracy of content in the public domain. So this could be in articles, infographics, audio, video, etc. Um, we check claims by organizations and public f uh, figures such as politicians as well as the media and also what the media reports when, when the media, for instance, quotes a minister um, and the information and the information they quote is, is incorrect. Then um, we also verify social media posts. I think um, Nishan referred to, uh, to that um, earlier. So we've got an arrangement with, with Facebook um, if somebody flags content, you know, as maybe uh, that, that it might be false, then we do we do um, verification checks for them as well. Okay, so so just in a nutshell, um, basically fact checking is the evaluation of um, verifiable claims made in public statements through investigation of primary and secondary sources. In plain and simple English, it's basically we check information. Um, that 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 we can verify. So we won't, we won't, we can't we can't check an opinion, for instance, and we also can't predict the future. So if the say, for instance, the minister of finance, um, Titan Beweni, tells us that the economy will recover by the end of next year and we'll have two percent economic growth, there's no way we can check that. Um, another very simple example to um, to uh, yeah to explain the difference between opinion and fact is. Um, I could I could say it's very cold in Pretoria today, or in Trane today, and um, that wouldn't actually that would depend on what I think is cold. So, but what I can verify is that it is, for instance, 21 degrees Celsius in Pretoria or Trane today. Okay. So um, external fact checking um, in the way that Africa Tech does it has has grown <laughs> tremendously. Um, over, especially over the past five years. It started in the US in the early 2000s, mostly um, with fact-checking uni units based at media organizations um, themselves. Um, but it has grown to something that is more, that is, is becoming more independent, um, as in the case with Africa Check, where we work with VITS, the, within the VITS journalism department, but completely independent of any, of any media. Um, very interesting. Um, the Duke, the uh, at Duke University, the Reporters Lab, they keep track of the growth of these fact-checking organisations. And a mere five years ago, in 2014, there were only 44 fact-checking units worldwide. That has quadrupled basically in in, in a, a period of five years to 187 active fact-checking organisations globally. Um, and as I've mentioned, these are either situated in news organizations or they are independent. Okay, um, as you are, th this is just the, the, the Duke Reporters Labs, um, labs map, um, just to show you, just to, sh just to show you where the fact, these fact-checking organizations are based. And there's also been tremendous growth um, in Africa, especially over the, over the past two years. Um, initially, when Africa Check started in, in 2012, we were the only fact-checking organization in, in Africa, and there's about seven, at the, seven independent ones at the moment. 
Okay, um, I just quickly want to go back to this. So, and, and the reason, the reason for the for the growth of this is um, also what Nishan referred to earlier: the juniorizations in newsrooms, the struggles of. Um, you know, of, of, of reporters and the time pressures, and then also the fact that anyone can be a journalist these days. So it's so much more difficult um, to control the spread of, of false information. Okay, so there are different types of false information. So I think we first became aware of the term fake news, especially around the US election in 2016. Um, when Donald Trump um, won, and um, what was found, what was found a few months after that, is that there were a group of um, Macedonian teenagers from Macedonia, which is about 8,000 kilometers from the U.S., and they basically just they just created clickbait in order to to earn money. So they would create these websites, and they would write outrageous far-right mostly headlines and people would go and click on it because it's so that I think one of them was uh, the Pope endorsed Trump um, yeah, before the election or something like that and it's so outrageous and so unbelievable that people go and click on it and then um, and then these um, website owners actually earn advertising income from that so it's basically um, clickbait it's also used to spread propaganda and influence um, politics um, what we we don't really refer to fake news because we don't believe if it's if it's news it's not fake. So we usually refer to false information, um, and they they are two different kinds of false information. And disinformation is deliberately fabricated or man manipulated and shared with the intent to mislead or cause harm. Um, and then misinformation is the false information or disinformation that is spread unintentionally. So I, I receive a picture on WhatsApp and I think, oh, this seems likely, and I just share that without really checking. And then, and then I also help with the spread of, of misinformation, although I'm not really aware of that. Okay, then um, at Africa Check, we have a very thorough research process. So what we, what we would do is we would select a claim to check. So if, if say, for instance, President Cyril Ramaphosa said the government built, or, or, yeah, built 400,000 RDP houses over the past 10 years, we actually we select that specific claim and we go and check if, if it is correct. So what we would first do is we establish exactly what was said. We, there's usually recordings at these press conferences and, and, and so forth. So you establish exactly what was said, and then you when then we also we're all we're always very upfront. It's not about catching people out; it's it's about verifying information. So we would also we would always our first step would be to contact the source and ask them where did you actually get get this figure from, and then we go and check that against. Or if they can't give it to us, or if they give it to us, we go and check it against um, publicly available um, data. And if we're still not sure, we also discuss the evidence with, with experts in a, specific, in a specific field. When we write, if, we, if you go to our, our website, africacheck.org, you'll see that we, the, in the, the way that we write our reports, we set out the evidence step by step. So we will, sell, we will tell you, this is the claim, this is, you know, this is the process that we follow to actually come to our, to our conclusion. Um, so that if anyone in the public, anyone who reads that report can actually go back and they can follow that same process and they will come to the same conclusion. Um, then before we publish, it's always, uh, we, so we don't just have a researcher and they write a piece and it's published, it's always reviewed by a team of editors and then they, uh, to make sure that everyone reached the same, the same con conclusion. And then we publish that and we monitor the feedback that we get on our reports. So these are the verdicts because sometimes you can't just say something is correct or it's incorrect. Some, sometimes we don't have all the data available. So we try to keep it quite, quite broad. But um, yeah, and then we rate our, our claims according to this. So correct, mostly correct, unproven, misleading and so forth, you've got the whole list there, or checked when we have multiple claims that, that we checked, we stamp it as 
subject. Okay, um, Nishan quickly referred to this uh, report earlier. So that is, this is one of our latest um, reports. So the police minister, Begi Tele, um, said that South Africa is, is um, the only country in Africa. He, say, he did say he wasn't sure in a parliamentary co um, committee meeting, but it, it, he's, um, he said that we're the only country in Africa giving out crime stats. Um, and we followed that entire process that I just explained to you. Um, so firstly, we, we contacted his spokesperson. We didn't get, we didn't have any luck. And then um, we looked at latest um, crime statistics from all over Africa. We spoke to safety and security experts. And, we, um, and then it was found that more than 50% of African countries actually do have crime stats. But what is interesting is that South Africa's is the most detailed. Okay. So now I want you to, oh sorry, I've, I'm first going to go to how to spot fault before we go to the practical um, exercises. Um, if you ever need any information on um, or any reliable data, uh, we have on our website we've got we've got a uh, we've got loads and loads of information where there's blog posts on how to verify a WhatsApp WhatsApp message. Um, we have Info Finder, which you can see here on the left hand side. And Info Finder basically covers it covers the entire Africa, but with a, with a focus on the countries that we work in, uh, Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa, and which we're currently working on one for our um, Senegal office, a French uh, yeah a French language Info Finder. And here you can basically go and search if you need the latest information on education in South Africa, for instance. You can go and search for that, or in Kenya or Nigeria. Governance, housing, elections and political parties. Um, and it is constantly updated. We have, we have a senior researcher who constantly updates it with, with the latest information. We've got there on the right-hand side some fact sheets and guides. So, you know, just, just um, in, and we, we explain in a very simple way how you can actually spot fake, fake news or false information, as, as we call it. Then, although I did say you can't, you can't fact check the future, what we do is we have a promise tracker. So if a political party at, um, uh, in their election manifesto promised certain things to happen over the next five years, then we actually go back to that and we track those promises every now and again and keep the public updated on that to keep um, politicians accountable. Okay, I think just a, just a few tips on spotting fake news. Fake news, and, and that can be not only websites, it can also be photos or video. So the most, the most important rule is use your common sense. That is basically what it, what it boils down to. If a story sounds too good, or it's shocking, or it's unlikely to be true, or it makes you angry or scared, that kind of thing, you you should always you should always think twice and think. But what you know? Why why was this this shared with him? If it's if if it's yeah, if it sounds too good, it probably is or shocking. Then um, check the URL or the website name. So for example, you have some fake websites. Um, it's it, the, it's not live anymore, but there was a Times Live one where the where the I was just changed to a one. And um, so it looks quite legit if you quickly, you know, have a look at the website. It looks like a news website, but it, but it isn't. So there's, what, what often happens is that these um, website owners who also want to, want to make money and advertising uh, revenue, they just change the URL of a well-known um, media organization like ENCA um, or the Sowetan uh, slightly, and then people think that that is the legit the legit website. So always look out for that. Um, also look for references to the site and story elsewhere. Like if you receive a, a WhatsApp message or you see something on social media um, about, say, for instance, xenophobic attacks or riots or whatever the case may be, if it really happened, it will probably be on News 24. It will probably be on NCA. So if you doubt it at all, just quickly go to your reputable media organization's websites and check, 
um, whether whether it actually it, it actually happened. Then uh, what also happens is you, you have check read thoroughly. Don't just read the headline. Check the sources and the quotes and the links. What sometimes happen, what sometimes um, happens is that some of these websites they will they will for instance link to the New York Times or you know and then you think oh but that that looks legit but when you actually click on that link it just takes you to to the generic homepage of the New York Times so it doesn't actually take you to a specific article that's that they're quote, quoting which is which is um, dodgy and then check writer bylines who actually wrote the story staff reporters sometimes it's yeah it's sometimes also a giveaway um, and then have a look at other stories, photos, and videos on the site. If it all seems too strange to be true, then it's probably a fake news website. Um, and then also, there's one, one, um, one thing that you have to note, though, is that some, some sites are specifically satire-based. Satire so all, you can also look at the About Us page for a disclaimer, because they would just often say, but this is, a, this is sat sat satire, like, uh, I don't know if any of you know the, the Onion and those, those sites. Okay, before we go <coughs> to questions, now we're going to do a quick exercise. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to verify an image or get an idea where an image actually comes from. Who has done a Google reverse image search before? Anyone? Got two, got two people. Okay, so what it is, it's basically a fancy name for a Google search of an image. So in the same way that you would search for a phrase on Google, you search for an image. So what I'm going to ask you to do is go to Africa Check's website. So that would be www. Where's your mouse? My hmm. no, where is it? Oh, now it's not picking up there. Just by clicking, yeah, burning bus. Typing. <laughs> no. I don't know. In quotation marks. And then you'll get you'll see an article titled false context graphic videos photos not of recent xenophobic attacks in south africa mm. are you finding it yep. okay the one that <laughs> the one that looks like that on that first image okay you can right click And then you can either save the image onto your laptop or you can click on copy image address. Is it working? So save it where you can easily find it. Is everybody with me? Okay. If you're using Chrome, you can also just right click on the image and it will give you an option to do a Google search. Yeah. Okay, so has everybody copied either the image or saved the image and copied the URL? Okay, so now you're in a different window. You go to um, google.com and you click on images or images.google.com should also take you there.
google.com. You can just go to Google. Just like you would when you would do a Google search. Okay. okay, and then you click on images as it gives you so it gives you it gives you options at the top, all images, shopping videos. If you go to images, okay. Then what you can do is now you get so delete whatever is in your search bar. Okay, and then if you click on the on the camera there on the right hand side, then you can either paste the image URL or you can upload that image that you just saved. So it's basically like a Google search but with an image. Sorry that I can't show you on the screen now. Did you call it something? Okay, and then you can just drag it into the search bar or you can upload it, yeah. So you can either just copy the, the URL or the image name and then or or you can you can insert the or upload the image or drag it in. Is everybody managing? Okay. All right. And now if you scroll down on that screen, then you'll see then then you'll immediately see that um, as you scroll down, so don't, don't always just look at the first result. You can see that the image has been used several times, and that is already um, and that is already a sign that there's that there's something wrong. That it won't be. It's not a picture of a new xenophobic attack. So what that picture is actually of was an intercape bus that was on its way from Malawi to Johannesburg, and there was a technical fault, and the bus burned. While um, people claimed, and it was shared all over the internet, that it was actually um, that it was actually uh, Zambians attacking South Africa because of, of xenophobia. So you'll often find when you then scroll down the screen that it, that it has been fact-checked or you can see when it was published first to see if it's a new image. So that's just one of that. You can either use that same um, picture or copy the image address or you can scroll down on your page to because this is very interesting to on the on the same Africa Czech report if you scroll down there's also this picture of a burnt bus or burnt uh, not bus truck okay and basically this this image was um, was also spread and it's basically the, the the copy with that said that Zimbabweans hit back at South Africa uh, by burning out South African trucks. But if you save that image in the same way, if you scroll, oh, you have to be on that same report again. With stuff, uh, it's good that you're telling us because yeah. we're busy, we're so busy updating that burning, burning bus. Yeah, it, this this isn't the same article. Yeah, so you you'll find it, this image in the same article. No, it's not. Just go to search again. Yeah, it's either, then it's the first, then it's the first um, result. But you also, but just like that is fine. Then it'll be the second result. Okay, so you go back to that same article, 
and then you can save this the image that's on this screen yeah if you scroll down you'll find this yes it's in the same article okay then you then you save it in the same way I'm just going to show you another tool okay so you save the picture or you copy the image address by right clicking on the image that one okay so then you can yes yes you can save the image or you can save the image, um, the address or the URL. And on Chrome, it often allows you to do a Google search directly. So there are different ways of, of doing it. Okay, and then does everyone have that image saved or the URL saved? Then you go to a website called tinai.com in, in a new window. So, yeah, so you go to Tina and then you also upload or you enter the URL. It works in the same way as. Tinai.com. You can just. Yeah, okay. So what makes TinEye sometimes a bit, so then you can also either upload the image by clicking on the arrow or, no worries. Okay. Or you can paste the URL or the image address. Everybody, oh, I can't walk around. <laughs> that, that they are talking about in the, in the copy. So often if the images are real, but the context with, uh, within um, which the images are used are not, are not real. So what, this, uh, the, what these um, pictures actually depicted was, uh, was a truck that was set alight um, during protests in Tuane in 2016. That people used it in order to, in order to basically stir, stir up xenophobic violence. Is there anyone with um, a question or who, who I can help to, to do this? But it gets very easy. You can also, it gets much easier when you get used to it. You can also download um, Tenai onto your mobile phone, so then you can just drag an image, or you can you can just right click on an image and um, check check it on your phone, and you can also download download um, Google Reverse Image Search on your on your phone. Um, another, are you? Are you happy? Are you happy? No, we 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 The team is. Another another nice thing, um, just a tip. If on your mobile phone you use Chrome as a browser, and I'm not trying to sell Chrome, it just makes it um, much easier. Uh, is you can just you can literally take your smartphone and just click on, on a picture for like, hold, hold, press your finger, hold it in for a while, and then it will also give you the option to do a Google reverse image search. So then you can do it on your phone if somebody sends you a dodgy WhatsApp or you have a, 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 a picture that you're wondering about on, on, your, um, on your phone. Okay. So that was just a quick, a very, very quick introduction. So we've got loads of of, of tools that, that we have available. We've got blogs on our website with links to these tools that you can go and explore. Um, so we also have tools for verifying video. We um, have data sources for, for instance, um, you know, how much money a municipality has spent over the, la over the, over the, the past year and on what. So there, there are loads of sources on our website that you can use to verify. That I hope everyone I hope everyone
everyone now knows how to do reverse image search. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's all from me. If you have any, you have any questions for either one of us. Yes. Okay, folks. Thank you very much. Colleagues. <coughs> <coughs> there was a little uh, taste of it. Symposium. There we go. Um, thank you so much, and to the other two colleagues. Very, very useful. Uh, let's have a bit of question and answer. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Curran. Um, my name is Mzee Zongosi. I am from the provincial and local liaison of the, uh, the department, GCIS. Um, I want to know just two things. Does your spot check um, methods, instruments, expand to your print medium, like newspapers, or are you s entirely on social or online platforms? Um, okay, sorry, no, and you had <laughs> No, it's fine. Because um, I'm thinking in terms of newspapers, and there's various adverts that are there sometimes, you know, advertising jobs and whatnot. How do you guys uh, verify if it's actually authenticated, is true or not? So that's what I want to know. That's the first point. Um, the second point was that while we have all these both checks, instruments, and we verified that this is either fake news or not, but in the instance that it is fake news emanating from whichever platform, yeah. Twitter, Facebook, what do we do next? We verify this fake news, do we have legislations to hold people accountable, what do you do, how do you extend it further? Yeah. So that's, yeah, that is still a very gray, a gray area where, where South Africa hasn't um, really made a lot of progress. So, but but what Facebook, what Facebook has implemented over the past, I think, year or two now, and with other that um, we're also involved in, is that you can actually report. Uh, I think by just right clicking on a post, you can report something as possible fake news or false information. And um, Facebook has fact checking organisations all over the world they are all um, you have to actually be a member of the international fact checking network um, and adhere to that their code of principles but then you can so, so facebook uses these fact checking organizations to um, to verify whether these posts are are true or false or incorrect or um, misleading um, they don't remove it because they because there's also a whole debate around you know freedom of speech and so forth but what happens is it won't, if, if it, there's, a, there's a change in their algorithm when something like that is reported, so a lot fewer people will actually see those, those posts. Um, your question around whether we also check newspaper content, yes, yes we do, so we do follow what is reported on in the media. Um, we don't only do online fact checking, but the only way we publish our reports are, um, are basically on our website and sometimes we do have partnerships with media houses like before the elections we had a partnership with City Press newspaper where um, they published some of our fact checking reports and the, the party manifestos and so forth and we have a weekly show on um, uh, EWN on Radio 7 or Talk Radio 702 where we also be, be, because we um, because we only publish on our website and on our social media um, platforms, it makes us so much powerful if we actually have those media, those other media platforms and radio stations and newspapers to partner with. But we also, while we, we do build good relations with the media and also in, in, in order to amplify our message, we also do fact check the media and what, and what they write. So it is quite a tricky relationship relationships but we do we do fact checking on newspaper articles yes just to add to Karina as well it's, and that's why fast skin and culture of fact checking is so important for us because as an organization we cannot check every claim and therefore we have to do a so what test or editorial team does a so what test and if we do not check this this particular claim what repercussions it may have to society so therefore the more people who are able to critically think and be able to fact check, to be able to create a, a culture, to be able to, to check such content. Okay. That's the principle. And just to add to this conversation, is uh, we've got an impact team. So, say for example, if we um, get a correction, and if the organisation doesn't do a retraction, 
We actually can count it until we do get to it. They do collect whatever the corporation they spread. So, um, yeah. Yeah. From there, I'm going to say so, and then Nick I think I have two, two questions. I think you, one of your presentations uh, in the first presentation, you spoke about some of the services that you offer, and, and the one of them being the fact, uh, fact uh, checking. But I'm looking to know what is your turnaround time. Suppose you find something and you say, you know what, the print is before we post it in our platform, can we send it there? What is your turnaround time? That's my first question. The second question is on that uh, item that you said to me called info finder. Mm. For, for me, how do you make sure that you remain also credible? And I'll tell you why. Here's the department saying that we've got 700 schools that we build, and you post it there. And obviously, I'm looking for information, and I go there and see 700. How do you check whether they are not lying to the department? The department can say 700 because they want to get, get rid of the general next to them. Because they have said they were going to build 700 uh, schools, so the general must be happy. So they will say we will build 700. So it will look legit. And when you start taking it and posting it in your platform, how do you protect your own integrity in terms of that kind of information? You would have got it. Yes, correctly from the department by consent, but how do you guarantee that they're not lying themselves? So that those are my two questions. Okay, so regarding the research, depending on um, what you want us to do, right? Yeah. And yeah. How long it takes. So the turnaround, if it's just maybe a press release, right? It may take us a day, it may take us two days. We just we did a sort of a client that took us a week. But we looked at like four and a half thousand words. And um, what happens is we take each claim, sources, um, and then we verify. And then we can do a report saying exactly what we did. So it generally could take a day, two days. And how about the damage if it's on social media? For instance, they are saying President Ramaphosa is doing this and this and this. And then it's going to take you like five days or whatever. Damage the process because it means that information will continue going viral. You see How the, do we yeah. stop it? So the research is the, the research takes a while because we don't yeah. only take one source. Yes. They go to two, three, four yeah. sources. It's uh, the work the actual research that goes into producing a report mm -hmm. takes a long time. They really very fast. And it just doesn't go to the researcher. From the research it goes to the deputy editor, mm -hmm. deputy mm -hmm. editor to the editor. So there's and everything gets recorded. So say, for example, if I quote you in the source, that information is recorded. Then from you, we go to the next source to check that. But everything is verified, uh, data, all that. So it's not a quick fix. So what I'm working to show is that, for instance, a claim may take longer for us to check because we need to look at various sources and stuff. But for instance, the two images that exercise that we have done now of where our current president is taken from one event and joined to another event that makes him look bad is something that we can verify very quickly within within the next few hours and, and, and put that information out there. Okay. Sorry, sorry, just to add to that. So, so that that's going back to our research process. So, so if if for instance, I don't know the example that you used with 300 houses, we will, yeah, we'll, we'll, then we we we. Uh, First, contact the spokesperson of the minister or the minister. Mostly, we obviously work through spokespeople to find out where they find, where they found that information, and if they if they whether they can supply us or can't supply us with the information. If they can't supply us with the information, then we put it in our fact checking report, and then we go to stats. Say we go to reliable so, or, or, um, sources that we've realized over the past seven years. Are reliable, and um, we also have we we have loads of experts as contacts um, in certain fields to also. So so we go through this whole. If we do a, a comprehensive fact-checking report and not just a spot check on Facebook, for instance, to see if an image is fake, then we go through this whole process, which could which could take a couple of days. And that's where we have the luxury in comparison to journalists in a very fast-paced media environment so what we try to do with our training is 
to give um, the basic verification tools, such as the Google reverse image search, things like that, to teach the media that so that they, because, because they work against a lot more pressure than we do. Although we, the quicker, obviously the quicker we get a report out, while um, you know the, it's still topical, the better. But we we follow this this process with every single report that we. Well, to answer your second question regarding how do we remain credible, mm -hmm. um, as an organization, we have also built a network of experts as well to support us in terms of our information. So we use publicly available resources in order to verify certain information, but we also draw on universities and experts as well to also help us to make sure. And where we get it wrong, and sometimes we do get it wrong, so we also put a correction out there to make sure. Thank you, sir. I'm Nicole with Ayanda. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, without using these gadgets, is there a way in which I could look at the image and say, this image depicts a house or a building in Brazil, so this picture is actually not by any chance a South African picture, or to say this was taken in winter or in summer, so actually this, is, this did not happen last week. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. it happens with uh, uh, aerial photographs yes. analysis. Yes. Yes. That's, that's, that's a very good point, something that I should actually, that I wanted to, to touch on. So sometimes it's as easy as seeing, okay, but this street name is in a different language or in a different, you know, hand, handwriting, or someone in a video is not talking a language that's typical, you know, from that, you know, from that, that country, or there's a street sign that, you know, gives the way that it's not, the, the weather, I mean, if it's, you know, you're not gonna find pictures of um, Johannesburg, you know, it's, snow like this <laughs> um, yeah so so sometimes those though just just using your your common sense as I said um, as long as you don't you don't need a fancy tool you can then use the fancy tool if you want to to make sure where it was where it was done we also often use um, Google Earth to see um, you know if, if for instance we hear that an image was taken um, somewhere we actually use Google Earth which is a which is an accessible tool to everyone in this room to see but does the street look like this does it you know is there something dodgy? are they driving left or right yeah yes exactly exactly that's that's the kind of things that we also that we also look for yeah so it's it's, it's about questioning everything but basically. It's, it's the people who are putting out this disinformation as well are becoming so good at uh, and, yeah. and it's making it so difficult for us to determine whether this is fake by just looking at it. Yeah. There's something that we haven't really talked about, but it's called deep fake, where to be able to take someone and their voice and their video and put another voice on it or another image on it to make it seem as if you said something that you didn't really say. So as we're advancing more and more, we're seeing that the people who are spreading this, in, this information are equally at the level as us in terms of, of finding ways to manipulate us. Yes, my question in fact was about deep fakes as well. How are we going to combat that in the future? But right now you can actually see when the video's been altered, but three, four years from now, you won't have a clue if it's a real video or it's a fake video. So yeah, in terms of our, <laughs> and that's why artificial intelligence and, and looking at tools that are there for the fourth industrial revolution to enable us to be able to pick up certain things is, is one of the solutions that we've adopted as an organization. And that will enable us to fast track in terms of our fact checking as well, to be able to pick up these certain things that have been checked or certain things within the video or underneath the video that we need to, to be able to pick up such things. Uh, Mr. Holo? Yeah, mine is on the, uh, the facts and the facts and then the truth. Yeah. Um, for instance, I saw one of your reports, you talked about it's unfounded that 80% uh, of uh, foreigners reside in Kilgore. Mm -hmm. And your, very, uh, your source is government census. Government census in Kilgore. We also had reports of those senses knocking door to door to get access. So I asked them, what is the significant uh, deviation do you use? So the level of significance you use in your methodology, and because there's no other sources you get. I suppose you can 
also transfer information from uh, patterns of local council voting patterns. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, this so-called reliable, how reliable is the reliable that you depend on? So, so I think it's come with, with, with experience over the past seven years, but also that's why we don't only have a stamp that says incorrect and correct. And sometimes something is correct, and sometimes there's just not enough data available, and then we will say that there's not, there's not enough data available that can also be verified with an expert, and that's why we have this, this, this concept of the network of experts as well. In, in certain fields. So, and that's why we don't only have correct and incorrect. We, we often say, but we actually can't prove this, or we cannot, so, so, um, yeah. I've, I've, but in your report, your report is that it's incorrect. W w which one is? I in Nigeria, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And then you, you, if you go down, then you have uh, that no, you actually have uh, one percent South African born, and then forty-five percent foreign. Mm. So this one was unproven. The budget was it? Uh, this, uh, it was unproven in this particular mm. particular one. So therefore, there wasn't enough data for us mm. to be able to say that that was actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's what we do. Right. Category. Yeah. Yeah. Colleagues, any other questions? Just one thing, I mean, it raises a question. You, hold on. Yeah. you work in Nigeria, how come Nigeria is doing really so wrong with that? <laughs> how come Nigeria is doing it wrong so much? You, you said you have an office in Nigeria. Yeah. 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 How do we get the Nigerian news people so, yeah, to yeah. get it right? That's what we're trying to do. That's why we have an office. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, and yeah. Well, that's just what I wanted to check with you because it might not be way what you do. But what is your trick to us? I mean, for example, with us now, the, the, the recent uh, attacks on foreign nationals, the, the comment I is making is really, really inflammatory. Get people angry. And yes, you can do this, but you know, once the feathers are out in the wind, it's very hard to do one of them making the sound. So just as a professional team, what is your guidance to us? I mean, how do you, what is your thoughts about going to correct it? I mean, okay, you can just put it on the website and guess what the story is not true, but do you have any thoughts about tactics or in the industry at large, you said put a correction on the site, you do it out there. What is your guidance to us I mean, to, to try and desensitize it, make it less inflammatory once it happens? Any, any thoughts? Um, it's very that is that's also a challenge because as you as you know like even even in a in a news when you look at newspapers if they made if a journalist made a mistake on the front cover they're probably going to place the correction on the on, on yeah, page too <laughs> so that that does happen and we've also seen a lot of research where the initial tweet with false information got a lot more traction than the actual um, correction um, so it is it is very. It's yeah. It is very difficult. What I think, what what I think we should do, and what we aim to do, and that's why we do this kind of workshops, is we we tell the public, we tell media, and, not, and, and everyone, we, we equip everyone with some with some information, with some tools, um, and make them aware of the false information. And it starts with me actually saying when I see a when I see a post on Facebook that one of my friends shared. That, 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 that is stating something that I know is, is incorrect, and I can, and sometimes you can just quickly go and do a, could, could do a quick verification or fact check. I actually call them out. I do, I do say okay. this is fake, this is fake news. And uh, yeah, so, so it's basically, I think it's okay. starting with, the, it's a very, it's a very difficult thing to do, but it's starting with the individual and, um, and becoming more and more aware of, of misinformation and the dangers around it. Yeah, that's why starting and working with young children to become better consumers of the media and of communications is so important, and that skill around critical thinking. Okay. Colleagues, I think we're at the end of our time with yours as well. There might be one or two uh, colleagues just to catch you as we close, but colleagues, I think that would be wrong not to say that it was an excellent piece of uh, information, excellent piece of information for us, um, and extremely valuable guidance, and, and I think we look forward to a very strong relationship and I must say on behalf of the team there, Colin, we really want to say thank you so much for coming through, giving us your time, valuable time to see us, and we honestly appreciate it. Thank you so much.